Magpie helps you quickly get up and running with the data lake. Magpie supports multiple cloud providers, and today we're going to be talking about how to use Magpie on Google Cloud Platform. And to do that, we're going to be going through an example use case for a real estate client that wants to use data to figure out a new location for a hotel in New York City. And they're going to bring together a couple different data sets inside of Magpie to answer that question. The first is an Airbnb listing and pricing data set that's stored in Google's BigQuery uh, cloud data warehouse. They're going to use that as an analog for uh, hotel room pricing information across the city. Then they're going to uh, use a New York City and tax, taxi and limousine commission data set. Uh, that's going to be used as an analog for relative popularity of different neighborhoods in the city. That's stored in Google's cloud storage. And then we're going to bring in uh, two external data sets uh, into the data lake, uh, one from the New York City Department of Finance and one from the New York City Department of Buildings. And those are going to be used to narrow down a target list of properties for acquisition for this hotel. The demo is going to be in three parts. The first is a rapid analysis phase where we're going to quickly bring together a couple different data sets in Magpie and get a, a, an answer really quickly uh, to that question. And then second, um, building an ongoing process. We're going to talk about jobs and pipelines uh, and monitoring and alerting in the platform. And then the third is about governance. We're going to talk about security and how to audit activity in the data lake. So this is the Selectus Magpie notebook, and right now we're accessing a Magpie cluster that's deployed on Google Cloud Platform. And as we go through the demo, you're going to see different paragraphs here, uh, and each paragraph might use a uh, different language based on what the right tool for the job is. The languages you're going to see are uh, first Markdown. We're going to use that to document uh, what we're doing as we go along, uh, which is useful you know, if we sh wanted to share this notebook with one of our other colleagues. Uh, you'll also see uh, Magpie script. That's Magpie's custom domain-specific language used for performing metadata manipulation, data engineering, and exploration tasks. You'll see SQL used to query data in the data lake. And then we also support Python, Scala, and R for more advanced use cases. And so the first thing that we're going to do is load in that Airbnb listing data. Uh, that resides in a BigQuery data set. And so the first thing we, we do in Magpie is create a data source that points to that data set uh, inside of BigQuery. And a data source is really just the connection information that tells Magpie where to look for a certain set of data. And that's a great way to centralize that configuration so everyone on your team who you give access to this data to uh, doesn't need to know what that connection information is. So then we're going to use a Magpie script uh, command uh, create schema from data source. And what this is going to do is create a schema, a collection of tables inside of Magpie from all of the tables that reside in that big query data set, that Airbnb listing warehouse. And so you can see we've created uh, six tables here. Then we're going to do some data profiling. Uh, data profiling in Magpie is a great tool to quickly understand uh, new data when you get access to it or understand how your data is changing as you're loading in new data. And so what we're going to do here is profile this Airbnb listing schema. And you can see uh, it shows we have six tables here. And for each of the tables, it shows the field counts, the row counts, and then uh, what the earliest and latest date or timestamp values are in the table. Uh, and this is helpful when you get access to a new data set to quickly understand, you know, what are the biggest tables in here? What tables are, you know, currently updated or maybe what haven't been updated? in a while and you know this is helpful when you have six tables but when you start to get 60 600 tables that's when it really starts being useful um, if, if you're a, a new person on the team or if you're getting access to a new data set so now that we've loaded in that data we're just going to show a couple of rows from one of the tables in that data set and this is reaching out to BigQuery and pulling back just 50 rows from that listing table uh, and it comes back uh, in a tabular view here. Um, you can browse that. And then we also support um, different uh, types of charts, including a map for geospatial data. Um, and we'll dive into those in a little bit more detail later. 
So now we've connected to that Airbnb uh, listing information. So we can move on to the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission data. And you know, as I mentioned before, this is going to be used to assess relative popularity of different neighborhoods in the city. And so again, same process. First, we're going to define a data source um, that uh, points to the Google Cloud Storage bucket where this New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission data resides. And so then again, we're going to use some Magpie script commands to uh, create tables within Magpie that point to the data that resides in Google Cloud Storage. And so here you can see this create table from file command. Um, we, uh, this points to a, an underlying folder in uh, the cloud storage bucket that contains partition parquet files that make up these different tables. So uh, we have some yellow taxi data, some for hire vehicle data, that's like Ubers, black cars, lifts, um, some taxi zone information, and then some aggregated data. Now that we've loaded that in, we can do some more profiling. So this is a little bit more of a detailed profile, a table level profile um, of the yellow cab data. And so here you can see this gets much more into the details of the content of the data than the higher level schema profile did. So you can see it has about 100 million rows. And then for each of the fields, we're showing how many null values are there, how many distinct values are there, and then something we're calling a profile type. Uh, vendor ID is a good example here that has profile type categorical. If we look into it, we see that this is actually a numerical field, um, takes on the values 1, 2, and 4, but this doesn't represent a continuous uh, value uh, like, a, like a count or uh, you know, uh, a metric. Um, this is really a set of categories that probably represent a foreign key to some other table, and so we've categorized that as, as categorical as opposed to the trip distance here, which is a number, but that is actually a numerical field. So for each one of these uh, fields, we're showing, um, we show the top 10 values, but then based on the type, we also show some different information. So here for the pickup date time, you can see uh, the top, that we're showing the top 10 values. Um, nothing really jumps out, but you know it shouldn't. You wouldn't expect that any one second would have more taxi pickups than another. Uh, if you did see that, that might represent a problem in your ETL pipeline or, or the underlying data that you're accessing. So good that we don't see that. And so now, um, since this is a timestamp field, we're showing how the data is breaking down by the components of the timestamp. And so we can look across day of year and see that, hey, there are less taxi rides around holidays, which makes sense. Um, looking at the months seems like uh, a, little bit, uh, a little bit less taxi pickups during the summer months as people leave the city. Um, seems like Fridays are the most popular day of the week, Sunday's the least popular, which makes some sense. And you know, not a lot of taxi rides in the early morning hours, but they start to pick up during the morning commute. Um, and then you know, they're pretty steady throughout the day, and then they pick up again in the evening as people are leaving work and going out. Uh, so this, uh, this profiling function is a really great way to quickly understand uh, the content of, of a new table that you get access to. And then once you run a profile, um, if you describe the table, um, so you, know, you can describe any type of metadata in Magpie, but when you describe a table, if you've run a profile, it'll pull in the most recent profile that was run. Uh, you know, so if one of my colleagues was in here, they, they ran a profile on the table, I don't have to run my own profile. I can just describe the table, and I get that profile there that I can use. So we're, you know, we're sharing the insights that we gain about this data throughout the team. So now we're going to write a SQL query um, that's going to join data um, across BigQuery and Google Cloud Storage. And what we're going to do here is compare the Airbnb listing data to the um, to the New York City Tax and Limousine Commission data to uh, understand where we might want to put a new hotel. And so as I mentioned, there it comes back as a table by default, but we can choose a number of different charts. We're going to choose a scatter chart here. And so what we have on the y-axis is the total number of taxi drop-offs um, in a particular taxi zone. Each one of these dots is a particular taxi zone in New York City. So you know, 
uh, more popular neighborhoods as you go up the y-axis. Across the x-axis, we have the air average listed price of Airbnb listings in that particular taxi zone, so more expensive neighborhoods as we go out here. And so if the uh, customer was interested in building a hotel that was going to rent their rooms at between $200 and $250 a night, maybe this is the taxi zone that they would be interested in building that hotel in because it appears to be the most popular in that price range. And that happens to be the Murray Hill neighborhood. So now what we're going to do is load in some New York City Department of Finance data, some tax records data, uh, and that's going to help us zero in on a particular uh, set of properties in that taxi zone that we might want to purchase um, and you know, put that hotel at. And so here we're using the save URL as table command inside of Magpie. This is really helpful if you want to pull in some, some external data that you find on the web in you know, CSV format or JSON format. Pull that into your data lake and use that alongside uh, your existing enterprise data. And so here we're telling it to save it as a new table called tax records um, and that the data has a header and that you should, uh, uh, Magpie should try to infer the schema based on the content of the data. So we were able to pull in uh, that data. And now if we describe the table, we can see that it appears that it parsed it correctly. We have a number of different fields with different data types here. Um, and it was saved to our default storage for our data lake. Um, that happens to be Google Cloud Storage on this particular cluster. So now we're gonna write some SQL against that new table that we've pulled in. And so what we're doing here is um, limiting the query to the particular set of taxi zones, um, the particular taxi zone that we identified above the Murray Hill neighborhood um, using Manhattan block identifiers. Um, we're limiting it to, uh, to properties that have enough lot area to house a hotel and we're um, limiting the assessed total value to be within the customer's budget. And so we get back about 37, we get back 37 um, properties that the customer might be interested in to target for acquisition. And so now we're gonna go back into Magpie script and save that last result as a new table. And we can refer to that later um, as we're continuing our analysis. And so, now we're going to move into part two. This is about pipelines and ongoing processes. Uh, say the customer wasn't ready to purchase any of those 37 target properties right now. Uh, instead, they're going to monitor uh, neighborhoods for building activity to see if anybody else is doing anything that's going to spur them to action. And so we're going to use a Magpie job to do that. So we're going to create a job to update the building permit information and then add some tasks to that job. And inside of Magpie, tasks are what do the actual work in the job. And we support a number of different uh, types of tasks, um, uh, the same as the, the languages that we support in the notebook. So we support Magpie script tasks. Those are a series of uh, Magpie commands. Um, uh, SQL mapper tasks, executing SQL uh, and saving the results as a new table, and then uh, Python and Scala script tasks for more advanced use cases, uh, as well as a nested job task that allows you to create more complicated job flows. But here we're just using two simple Magpie script tasks. Uh, the first one is going to use that save URL as table command that we saw earlier uh, to save the building permit information as a, as a new table. And then we're going to have another task that just profiles the table after we've uh, saved the new data so that uh, when we come in in the morning after this job runs at night, we have an updated profile of that building permit table. So once we have created a job, we can execute it in line in the notebook or we can schedule it for periodic execution. Um, we use a cron style syntax and um, our internal scheduler parses that and executes the job uh, whenever it's scheduled. And so here we're just having it run you know, every day uh, at 11 UTC. Then once you've created a schedule, you can get notified about that schedule. So here we have, um, we're creating a notification subscription that triggers when the job fails and it's going to send the notif notification to my email. 
just like you can describe tables, you can describe jobs inside of Magpie. And so here when we describe the job, we can see the tasks uh, that are going to run and when it's scheduled to run, um, if at all. In addition to getting notified about the success or failure of a job, uh, you can query the execution history of the job interactively uh, from the notebook. So here we can see it's only run twice. Um, it was run once manually, and then uh, it started off on its, on its daily schedule. Um, and we can dive into the details of a particular run and see how long each of the tasks took and any log messages uh, that might have been written. So now we're going to dive into part three, the security and auditing portion of the demo. Uh, so let's assume that the customer has loaded in all this data and now they wanna give access to that data to an analysis team that they have. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a workspace schema for that analysis team uh, where uh, people can save, uh, save new tables and um, share, share information among the team. Then we're going to create a security role for the analysis team and grant them access to the data they need. So we're going to give them read access to the Airbnb listings and New York City data schemas and then the ability to create new tables in their workspace schema. Then we're going to grant that role to a hypothetical user. Great, so just like we can describe tables and jobs, we can describe the role and we can see here um, who the members of that role are and what permissions they have. So additionally inside of Magpie we can do some auditing and figure out how people have been using the data lake. And so the first way to do that is with this activity history command uh, and we can target this at an organization level meaning a, a whole set of users or an individual user level. So here we're just showing saying uh, what were the last 30 commands that were run in the Selectus Google organization. Uh, and here you can see all of the commands that I ran during this demo. Um, you know, most recently I described that security role. Um, I can dive into the details of any of these, maybe the SQL query. This is where I did the, uh, the query on that tax records data. So we're recording what the SQL was and then what permissions were required to execute that command. Here we needed to read access to the tax records table and use access to the underlying data source where that table um, is saved. Uh, so the other way that we can audit activity in the data lake is through the usage history command. And this, uh, rather than what, what has this user been doing or what have this set of users been doing, we're saying who has been using uh, this metadata object. In this case, who has been using the Airbnb listing schema and all the tables in that schema. So you can see um, not many uh, audit messages here because I just created the schema at the beginning of this demo. So we can see the command that I used to create that, um, create schema from data source. Um, here's where I showed a couple of rows from one of those tables. Uh, here's where I ran a SQL query um, to produce that scatter plot. And you know, all of these show those usage events um, and show what tables were accessed, what data sources were accessed. Uh, then I granted permission on that schema to the analysis team. And um, I just recently ran this metadata usage history command. Um, so, you know, we have a, a part four here in the demo about Python and Scala scripting, um, but that's, uh, we'll save that for another video. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about Selectus Magpie, um, please uh, visit our website and uh, sign up for a demo.